Hi everybody, welcome to this video lesson on model selection. Unfortunately, it has been proven by two gentlemen named Walpert and MacReady in their no free lunch theorem that there is nothing like a perfect model for all data sets. So you will need to figure out what models work better for your particular problem than others. Picking the right model for your data set use case and machine learning problem is a challenging task. When you get into this the first time, but luckily we at Altair have broken this down into a few simple steps. So let's get started. Your first step should be to consider which of the main task buckets you are in. Because if you know that, then you can already eliminate a number of learning algorithms. If your question is, is this A or B? Or will this be A or B? You have a classification problem. You're looking at regression with the question, how much or how many or how many will happen? If the question is, how is this organized and what belongs to each other, then it is a clustering problem. Associations and correlations are used to answer questions like what happens together or what changes together. And finally, if your question to answer is, is this weird? Then you are in the area of anomaly detection. In this video, we are looking at the most common machine learning task, which is classification. Now that we know our type of task, we want to identify which subset of model is relevant to us. But before we show you, let's take a look at the data which we are using first, because we will need that information to adjust the tool. For many models, certain data types, like for example categorical information, is not suitable. So that will help us to further narrow down our options. Okay, so we open our OFI cross-validation process and inspect it. The first operator retrieves customer data, and the second filters it to make sure we only have examples with a valid entry in our churn column, which is our label. To look at our data after these two steps, let's set a breakpoint to pause the process execution once we start it. We can do this to the right mouse button and then select breakpoint after. You will probably use the F7 key to set and remove breakpoints. Let's run the process. Now we are presented with our data and we see that we have a churn, gender and payment method data in form of categorical or binary data and age and last transaction are numerical attributes. It is also noteworthy that we don't have any missing values in any of the attributes. Since we're using an example set to demo things, we have just a few attributes and less than 1000 examples. This is especially important together with the data types as some learning algorithms may take very long to calculate in case you have many of either one or both. Before we move on, I want to point you quickly to the indication that we are now really in the middle of the process at our breakpoint. As you see up here, the run process button has changed and now allows us to resume the process execution. However, we will just stop it and then return to the design view as we have completed our data review. So let's also remove the breakpoint. Now let's be bold and let's try to find the best of our five most frequently used algorithms. Instead of going into a cross validation operator and swapping them one by one while writing down the accuracies, we will use the much more convenient compare rocks operator. However, first let's save our process as 06 model selection. Now we will disable the cross validation and we will drag and drop the compare rocks operator into the process. When you select it, you see the option to change the number of folds of a cross-validation or the split ratio to be used to create a training and test set. So in a sense, this operator loops over every algorithm it contains to determine the accuracies. And you won't need to worry about the training error, which we mentioned in the testing a model video because RapidMiner will automatically perform a cross-validation or if you set the cross-validation to the value minus one, it will perform a split validation. Through the magic of video editing, we will set up the compare rocks operator with our five pre-selected machine learning algorithms quickly. We are now ready to run our model comparison. And here's our result, which is called a rock graph. In the rock graph, the true positive rate is plotted on the y-axis and the false positive rate is plotted on the x-axis. But where do we get these curves from? Let's take a step back and see what we have been doing before. So we reactivate our cross-validation, which has a decision tree inside, and we run things again. The output of our cross-validation is the accuracy and a confusion matrix, which we explained in the validating a model video. The true positive rate is now the number of positives correctly classified and divided by the number of total positives. The false positive rate is accordingly the number of negatives incorrectly classified divided by the total number of negatives. The false positive rate is also called the false alarm rate. 
and the true positive rate is also known as hit rate. Now these terms give a good indication about the background of rock graphs. Rock stands for Receiver Operator Characteristics and was established during World War II to describe the performance of the people supervising and interpreting the signals on the radar displays. Now let's take a look at a blank rock graph with hit rate on the y-axis and false alarm rate on the x-axis. Operating staff, which had an as good hit rate as false alarm rate, are as useful as a coin when decided if measures were to be taken when a signal appeared on the radar screen. In the upper right or lower left, we could see extreme examples of an operator who never triggered an alarm and therefore had also a small false alarm rate and one who would always trigger an alarm and therefore never miss an actual true case but produced a lot of false alarms. Neither of those is useful. The best receiver operator had a very high hit rate and a very small false alarm rate. The same approach is true for our classification algorithms. One thing which is still to be explained is how do we get from a rock point characteristic which we can calculate from our confusion matrix to a curve. For that, we have to extract the confidence for each prediction made by classification algorithms. The confidence is similar to the probability that the predicted class will actually be correct and therefore tells us how sure the model is with its predictions. In Rapid Miner, we can retrieve those confidence values from the performance operator. Make sure to connect these to a results port so we can get an output. Now as we run the process again, you can see the confidence is displayed. If you rank them, you can see the prediction changes for those values with confidence is lower or higher than 0.5. This is a decision threshold, which seems intuitively reasonable. However, in some scenarios, we want to adjust this threshold to our classification model. For example, in cases where we are testing for an indicator for cancer, we maybe want any example, which even has a small probability to be flagged positive. Or in cases where we are screening our customers for upsell, we only want those flagged as interesting where we really have a high probability to land a deal as otherwise we will overload our sales team and waste their time. So by varying the thresholds, we are influencing the decision if an example is flagged as a positive or a negative case. Therefore, we generate a new confusion matrix with every variation in the threshold and in turn, get a new pair of true positive and false positive rates resulting in different points on our rock graph, which we can connect to draw our rock curve. Now, going back to our output of the compare rock operator, we can say that the models with rock curves further to the upper left are the better ones. However, the final model selection for you is also dependent on the preference if you're looking at a more conservative or more liberal classifier. In this video, we only compared unoptimized models with each other, but often the performance can be drastically improved if you change the modeling parameters. In another video, we will show you how you can do such an optimization in RapidMiner. Thank you very much for watching.